What's going on everyone? Gelman with Live All These Stocks back with our weekly Apple update video where we take a look at how Apple stock traded this past week. Key support and resistance levels that we are looking at. We'll also take a look at some news articles um, that came out, some you know price targets, some news related to what the company is doing in the future to see if Apple stock is a good buy currently. And I'll share that all with you guys. But real quick, if you enjoy videos like this, don't forget to hit that like button down below. We are super close to 5,000 subscribers. All thanks to the support you guys have shown me. So I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos that I put out in the future. So let me hit record and we will get right into it. So right out the gate, um, you know, not a great week for Apple. And we'll take a look at the charts in just a little bit to kind of get those support and resistance levels mapped out like we always do. But what I want to talk about a little before that is just the overall picture of Apple currently, right? So a, a couple weeks ago, we got the announcement that maybe they were working on a car deal, right? Um, so Apple Car, which is expected to come out in 2024, is going to be an autonomous car that they're probably going to partner with someone on and you know build that car out it's going to be autonomous um we don't know if it's going to have like the apple logo and just produced by someone else or if it's going to be you know maybe a hyundai or gm or any other car with just apple technology in it um, so we don't know a lot of details right but that was kind of the driving force of apple did not really help push it up as much as we thought it would um and then you know hyundai kia came out and said that you know that's probably not going to happen um that was a whole ordeal, right? Apple was kind of annoyed at them for kind of leaking it. Hyundai, Kia weren't sure if they even wanted to do it in the first place. So all that happened, um, and that was about a week ago. And then this week, what we saw was, you know, Tesla actually buying, I think, $1.5 billion, if I'm remembering my numbers correctly, of Bitcoin. Um, and that is now going to be a part of their balance sheet. So now um, there is a little bit of a focus on, well, does do other big companies kind of follow suit, right? Because Tesla, you know, Apple has been the innovator for a lot of, you know, different things in their field. But now Tesla is kind of that person, Tesla and, you know, Elon Musk kind of taking the the way. So let me share an article with you guys here um, about, you know, this, this crypto app, BitPay adds Apple Pay support to its prepaid MasterCard, right? So BitPay is a cryptocurrency payment service provider, has announced that its prepaid card now supports Apple Pay. And the reason this is huge is because, you know, two things, right? A lot of people think that cryptocurrency is the future, um, or at least if not, you know, I don't think we're going to go away from currency and just to crypto, um, but that it'll be more easily accessible to, you know, for, for all the large payment platforms. Um, and it'll be a way that we, you know, conduct business in the future for sure, more so than it is now. So when we see news like this, right? Like I think um, if I'm not mistaken, we saw a MasterCard Bitcoin come up earlier this week as well. Um, yeah, MasterCard will support cryptocurrencies um, two days ago, right? And if you take a look at the MasterCard um, chart, right, it'll it'll kind of reflect that, right? I think it had a really nice green candle, right? Look at that gap up. I mean, yeah, it kind of came back down, but that push up was related to this news. It went from trading in the 330s to hitting 350 at one point, right? And I think that's kind of the catalyst that we're looking at is if Apple comes out and says, hey, we are going to support you know, Bitcoin through Apple Pay, or we are going to, you know, do this in terms of cryptocurrency investment. I think that's going to be a great catalyst. So, you know, between the electric car and the cryptocurrencies, we've got a couple different things that could really drive Apple into new territories. Now, that does not take away from the fact that they are already killing it, absolutely killing it with what they're doing currently, right? If you guys saw my video when we covered earnings, I mean, we're talking iPhone sales expectations were beat, 5G iPhone, right? We're talking Mac sales beating, I iPad sales beating, App Store killing it best quarter yet in the last quarter of 2020, right? So we're talking about all of these things already happening, but then you add, you know, a car on top of it or you add cryptocurrency on top of it. I think it really opens up new doors for Apple to, you know, really kind of take over, um, you know, that part of the of the equation as well. Now. The other thing that I wanted to cover is this article right here. So what we saw was Apple was upgraded to strong buy. And let's take a look at what that really means, okay? So Zach's ranks, it ha they have multiple ratings, right? They have sell, hold, buy, strong buy. Strong buy being their strongest one, obviously. 
And so the, the fact that Apple, you know, made it here is definitely good. Um, this upgrade is, you know, an upward trend in earnings estimates, which is one of the most powerful forces impacting stock prices, right? So as you guys know, the more money a company makes, the more EPS, which is earnings per share, um, and the higher earnings per share, the more a company should be valued because it's providing more money back you know, per, per share for its shareholders, right? So let's take a look at, you know, a little bit more, more kind of data driven stuff in this article. Um, they talk about uh, a little bit here. Yeah. So rising earning estimates and the rating upgrade mean that, you know, their, their underlying business is improving and this improving business trends tends to push the stock price higher, right? I can go into more details about all the numbers, but I made a video on it a couple weeks ago. Across the board, they already had crazy high expectations of this past quarter, and they were able to beat that for every single kind of line. So iPhone, iPad, Mac, I think Max was the one that they barely missed by like 0.01 billion services, others, right? We're talking accessories, Apple watches, stuff like that. So great, great you know, outlook there for Apple. Um, and so the, the, the key thing here is this, right? So the maker of iPhone, iPads, and other products is expected to earn $4.47 per share for the fiscal year ending September, 2021. So this upcoming, um, you know, three quarters, which is a year over year change of 36%. We're not talking about a growth company, guys. We're talking about a two plus trillion dollar company, right? That is still posting 30% year over year growth that is you know unheard of that is phenomenal um so i just wanted to kind of share that with you guys um and, and the other thing i want to share with you guys is is why it's a big deal that this you know zach's is the stack strong buy is such a big deal so they have first of all they maintain an equal buy and sell rating for you know the four thousand plus stocks that they cover right which means that they're not necessarily going to just say bye 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 across the board for every buy that they have they typically have an equal proportion of buy and sell okay and the other thing is only the top five percent of their their four thousand stocks that they covered get a strong buy rating and the next 15 get a buy rating so we're talking apple being the top five percent of their of their you know four thousand stocks that they cover so again really really big deal for apple just wanted to cover a couple things that i thought could be you know potential catalysts moving into the future usually i try to focus more on you know kind of what the company's already doing um and, and kind of news that came out but i really wanted to take a minute here and kind of share the reason why i have been an apple holder apple stockholder for a little while and i continue to be an Apple stockholder, right? I continue to hold my shares because this is kind of what I see. Now, I could totally be wrong. They could not go into crypto. They could not get the car and they could not get the 30% growth, right? But all we could do is really project what we see. And this is what I see. So I wanted to share. And I'll also at the end of the video, share a little bit about what I see um, in terms of, you know, or not necessarily what I see, but also what I'm doing right now. I've shared this before, um, but this is kind of the weekly update video. So I know a couple people kind of watch it once a week. So I'll cover that analysis as well. So now let's getting right into the chart. Um, let's take a look at you know how the five day chart looks like for apple and you know as you can see we, we were pretty much other than kind of this push up on tuesday um it was a pretty red day for apple um we started kind of in this not not pretty red week but pretty um not a great week for apple a little bit of a red week for apple um downward trend is what i'm trying to say here so Monday, um, we saw a wild swing down, swing up, and then finally kind of consolidated near our 136 level, pushed up a little bit. Tuesday, we saw a little bit of a push up, making this high of 137.88, faded right back to this 136.05 level. And then Wednesday, we saw a sell off right out of the gate, and then it recovered and pushed up into this 135. Thursday, we got rejected again at this 136.05 level, pushed down, came a little bit up, and then kind of same story, pushed down, came up. So one thing that you'll see, um, actually two things that I wanna point out this week is that A, this 136.05 level that we had was kind of where the action was centered around, right? So we've got a couple levels in this range. The first, I guess the topmost level here is the 138.43, which we came close to, but didn't really hit that, right? This is 133.45 on the bottom, um, which we came kind of close to, but again, did not perfectly bounce off of that. 
but what you'll see is you know every single day pretty much other than friday because we never hit that level um, we were either above it and bouncing off of that level or we were below it and getting rejected so thursday got rejected here we were getting support here we were getting a little bit of a support before we came right back down so that 136.05 level was kind of a pivot point for this week. As you can see, the first half of the week, we were above it and finding support. The, bottom, the second half of the week, we were below it and finding it as a little bit of a resistance. So now let's map out our, our levels of support and our levels of resistance, both from you know the EMAs that we look at, as well as a, uh, as well as a um, um, price action. Excuse me, I just blanked out there for a second. So on the upside, right, that is the first kind of level that we have. Um, I'll do kind of this and then I'll take a look at the holistic chart um, and then I'll share the strategy that I was talking about. So let's take a look at the EMAs. My computer's being a little slow. Um, okay, so first things first, um, if we start to push up, right, what we have is, you know, we had this fall with a little bit of a rise and now we're having a gradual fall. We're coming up against this line, which I'll talk about the significance of in just a second. Um, but if we push up, the first level that we have is this 8 EMA and 136 level. 8 EMA comes in the high 135s, 135.70s. So really that 135.70s to 136.05 is a level that we need to take over. As you saw from this past week, it was a little bit of a challenge for us to take that level over, right? So that, that's gonna be you know interesting for us to see. If we can clear that, since we are making lower highs every day, um, the high of the previous day kind of becomes the soft point that I'm aiming for. Um, my real point that I'm aiming for is this 138.43, but along the way, if we can clear 136.05, I'm looking at 136.39, which is the high point of February 11. Then I'm looking at the high of the day before, which is 136.99. Then I'm looking at 137.88, right? So those, those are kind of the points that I'm personally looking at on the journey to 138.43. That's what I'm looking at on the upside, right? 136, these level 138.43, and then I think that kind of sets us up for 140. On the downside, what we have is this 133.40s level, right? That's the first level of support that we have. Then we've got the 34 EMA at, in the 133.20s. Then we've got this kind of diagonal line going across in the, in the 133s. So low to mid 133 should act as a really good level of support, in my opinion. Again, if this if this trend line continues and we keep pushing, then I think 133s is a good level. And then we've got the mid 132s right below it, right? So 133s, 132.50s right below it, and then we've got the 131.50s right below it as well. So again, 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 mid 133s, 34 EMA at 133.20s, and then we've got the 132s, 132.50s, and then 131.40s. So that's what we're looking at from a level of support if we start to go down. Now let me take a step back and we'll take a look at the overall picture. So you see this line coming across, this diagonal line, right? What we've seen is since pretty much November, we bounce off of this line, we push up, we come right back down, we push up, we didn't come down here, push up, came down, push up came quickly down and now we pushed up a little and we're coming down so if the past couple months trend line right this line that we see going up holds what we should see is a bounce off of this level it doesn't have to be perfect right i'm not saying we're going to go down to it and bounce the bounce could happen on tuesday when market opens the bounce could go right against this line and bounce but if we do see a bounce should happen in the next couple of days if we see that bounce, I'm hoping for a push up again towards this clearing of this 138, if we can capture 136, so 136, capture that, 138, push towards 140. That's what my goal is. The other line that I could draw here, but I'm not you know, super convinced that this is actually a, a line that we need to be looking at, but hey, I'm gonna draw it. Um, I, think, I think it's a very steep line that we're seeing um, so if I were to draw this line right here, you guys, what we're seeing is over time, we are getting rejected by this top line. Actually, it doesn't look too bad here with the rejections at the in the past couple of days. So if this holds, we've got a couple of days before it really needs to break out um, and start pushing up, right? Or I mean, maybe pushing down, but hopefully pushing up. Not convinced yet, but at the same time, I am watching it. Now, not saying that this isn't our typical bull uh, pennant right our wedge pattern that we're so used to seeing in my other videos 
but I'm watching it, right? If we get rejected and then we get, you know, maybe here on 216 and we break out, I'm following that and I'm jumping on. But, you know, just wanted to point that out that we are making, you know, over the, since pretty much November, um, you know, generally speaking, we are making higher lows, which is great to see. And here we are making lower highs, which is not fun to see. But if it leads to a breakout, it could be really interesting to see as well. So now what am I doing with Apple? So as you guys know, I'm continuing to hold my shares as I always have long-term bull on Apple. Um, for options, I'm not doing straight calls or straight puts just because, you know, in, 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 the, in the way Apple's been trading, right? We're talking a 24 cent. You could do intraday, definitely. Like if you play the levels that we have, 136, 133, maybe you could catch that move intraday, make good money. But longer term, you're gonna face a lot of time decay when you go into these options, right? Because Apple is simply not moving fast enough. Look, if you hopped on here on a call and wrote that up, amazing returns. You wrote a put, wrote, you know, you got great returns on the way down. Here where it's kind of gradually coming down, right? The IV is coming out of the options. The time is coming out of the options. So it's really hard, in my opinion, in my experience. Again, you could totally be making money um, if you're doing intraday, I think but I just wanna kind of point that out. So now, what am I doing with, in terms of, um, you know, what am I kind of doing with Apple actively? And that is, um, well, not as active as, as some of my other trades, but what I'm doing is I'm gonna go out and I sell these covered calls on a weekly basis. Now, to do this, to sell one covered call, you do need 100 shares. So for those of you that are holding a lot of shares, this could be useful for you. Now, what you can do is you can figure out um, and I don't, I don't know if Webull has it. I use Tastyworks for most of kind of my options trading. But typically what you want to find is the um, delta, which is the, the percentage uh, that the um, the chance that you know your option will be in the money at the expiration date. And I typically like to go out at the 20 delta, which means there's an 80% chance that I'll get to keep the full um, amount that I'm selling anyway. Let's say you think that this week Apple is not gonna go past 140, right? You could sell this covered call for 36 bucks, right? This is 36 cents, which means you get 100 times that, so 36 bucks. And as long as Apple doesn't go to 140 by this February, by 19th of February, you get to keep the whole $36. If Apple does, however, go above $140, you are still promising to sell someone your shares for $140. So if you think Apple's gonna run to 145, not a good deal. But if you think Apple's gonna go to like 139 this week, which is still a three and a half, four dollar move, this is not a bad idea. Now, if you wanna be more aggressive with this, you can even go to 138. Like if you think Apple's gonna have a red week, you could go, okay, yeah, you know, I'm gonna sell my 138s and get $69 for it, right? Because you're willing to sell it at a lower price. Instead of getting 36 bucks, now you get $69 for it. And assuming that Apple expires bef uh, below 138 this upcoming Friday, you get to keep 100% of that. So these are called covered calls. Again, would recommend you look into it a little bit more before you start um, you know, selling these against your options. There are risks to it. Um, if it happens to run, um, you will you know, lose your Apple shares. That's the downside. Um, and the other thing I like doing with Apple right now is vertical put spreads, again, at a much safer option. So what I have right now is a uh, March 132.50, 127.50 vertical put spread. I do think we've got really good support, again, like I've mentioned, um, between where we are today in the 135s and the 132.50. And what I'm hoping for that is to kind of have time decay work for me if Apple decides to do nothing or if we do see a little bit of a bounce, kind of this line that we're talking starts to push up, then I'll see you know the the price of the, of the puts go down as well and I'll benefit from that. So that's what I'm doing with Apple. Um, I know this is a longer video than usual, but I did wanna kind of point out, hey, I see these catalysts coming. Here are the what I see with the charts and here is um, kind of what I'm doing with Apple shares. So hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, um, don't forget to drop a like down below, subscribe to my channel if you are new, comment down below what your thoughts on Apple are and I'd love to chat with you guys down there. If you guys wanna use Webull, which, which is what I'm using in the video, I will drop a link down in the description as well. So be sure to check that out. We both get some free shares if you sign up using that link. That's all I had for you guys today. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend and are staying warm. I know it's getting cold in some places, including where I am in Texas. So I um, hope you guys are all having an amazing week. Remember that we are off Monday, um, or at least the markets are off Monday, and we will pick up on Tuesday. So hope you guys have an amazing weekend. Let's remember to be a bit better every single day, and until next time.